There's nothing quite like a tank crew rolling into battle all singing together, is there? <laughs> In this video, I'm going to be painting the figures for the Rogaldorn battle tank. I'm going to be doing a scheme that's a little different than the normal Cadian scheme, uh, Imperial Guard schemes that you often see. Sometime last summer, June or July of 2022, I saw this particular photo on the Warhammer community website, and I really loved the look of those, those figures. Tactically, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, you know, a dark blue with the, the white armor like that and the big, you know, big red patches of uh, the big red stripes on it and things like that. Tactically, it doesn't make any sense, but I just thought that looks really cool. And I started doing some research and I got a little uh, almost obsessed with trying to find out more information on this. And I found that there, I found a few other photos. One was in the old uh, Astra Militarum Codex, not the current one. Uh, that was just released recently, but the one prior to that. But there was not a lot of information about, you know, what regiment this was or what, what anything uh, about that was. And then I just happened to be going through, uh, I've got a Warhammer Plus subscription, and I just happened to be going through uh, some copies of White Dwarf from a few years ago. And in the October 2017 White Dwarf, I found this article by uh, one of the uh, members of the heavy metal team, Paul Norton, who had painted those particular figures. So uh, I, I could have figured out the paints on my own or of close approximation, but I thought I'll go with what he suggested in the magazine. I did actually contact him to say, hey, what's the, uh, what's the lore story to, uh, to these figures? And he said, it's been so long since I painted it, I don't recall. So. Uh, I don't, I don't know. And if somebody knows, I'd love for you to drop a comment in the, uh, in the below the video. But I don't know who these are, but I will just call them Cadians, and uh, and I'm going to paint them up as try and do it similar to how Paul did uh, in his article and with the models he did because I really like the look of them. And I'm going to be following those colors for uh, for the tank itself when I get to that. Now prime the figures in a very light gray because there's going to be some light, essentially white elements that are going to be on here later, so that'll help me uh, when I get to painting that. And the first thing I'm going to paint is you'll notice there's this collar under here, underneath everything else. And that's going to be really difficult to get to later on if I don't paint it now. So I'm going to get that painted in first and uh, get that out of the way, and then I can move on to some larger areas of color. When I was painting in that black gray, I also took the opportunity to paint in any other details around the, the figures that had black parts. I'm going to begin painting in the suit itself, his main suit. And this is with Cantor Blue. Now I've thinned this down about 50-50 with water, so it's not going to go on there super opaque for the first coat. But of course, that's what I want, because I want it to also go on there fairly smooth. So I'll just put this on a little bit at a time and uh, get it get it on there, let it dry, and then once it's good and dry, I'll go on and put a second coat of it. Now I am going to be trying to avoid especially the areas of white armor. Um, didn't do a good job of it right there, I've already hit it. But I'll be able to fix that later, but it will be easier to just not overpaint them at this stage, so I'm going to do my best to avoid them. Now I'll start adding some highlights with some Altdorf Guard Blue to all of the texture and uh, some of the open areas just to give it some light reflection. I've thinned this about 50-50 with water. This is a process that um, I'm not very good at. So I like to use thin paint that allows me to build up the layers and uh, have a little more control over the process as I go along. Now I'll paint in some highlights right on the edges using Lothorn Blue, made famous by Lothorn of the Hill People. Spot that reference. 
Now I'll paint the leather belt and these pouches and things like that with Thondia Brown. There's also some parts of the helmets that a couple of the crewmen are wearing that I'm going to paint with this leather color. Now I'm going to paint all of the armor panels and the hard parts of the helmets and the knee armor and the elbow armor. There's lots of little places. Um, I'm going to paint those with Celestra Gray. Now the trick to painting white on most models is to not actually paint white, but rather to paint very light gray and then highlight with even lighter grays up to pure white. And it's going to make it read as far more white than if you just paint it white, pure white. If you paint it pure white, you have nowhere to go for the highlights. And it just gets a little stark. Whereas if it's dark gray or light gray with some highlights, it's going to read more natural. Following the recipe that Paul Norton used in his article on painting these, I'm going to base all of the flesh areas with Rackarth flesh. Now I'll use chain mail from Vallejo Game Color. This is the new uh, Game Color range, and I'm really liking it so far. But I'll use this for the belt buckles, gun handles. I'm going to probably go ahead and paint in the eagles, although I'm going to give them another uh, gold coat over that. But just any details, buttons and things like that, that need to be painted silver. Now I want to start adding in some shadows. So I'm going to use some Citadel shades and uh, a contrast paint to do this. And I'm going to take kind of a broad brush approach and paint over um, quite a few of the elements with these shades and contrast paints and then go back with uh, the previous paints and just touch them up a bit. It's a, it's a bit of a longer way around, but I find it easier between my, my brush control and my eyesight to just kind of hit everything and then go back and touch it up rather than try and put it in really precisely. But all of these are neat right out of the bottle, but certainly if you're, uh, if you're doing this, you may want to try some uh, various mediums or thinning thinning solutions so that you can control how they they build up on your model but the goal is again just to add a little bit of depth to uh, to what's already been painted and just kind of unify and bring all the colors together I'm going to go back over the armor with some Celestra gray just clean up that wash a little bit but I'm going to make sure to leave the darker color in the recesses now I'll use some Vallejo Game Color. This is one of their reformulated paints. It's called Dead White. I'm just going to use this to do some edge highlights all around the white armor. Now using some Gorthor Brown, I'm going to edge highlight all of these leather details. Or at least I'm going to try to. Now over his eagle and the scary skulls, I'm going to put a Vallejo Express color. This is nuclear yellow. Works kind of like Nasdrag yellow from Citadel. You put this over a silver and it ends up looking like a kind of a muted gold. I think it works really well on figures because it has a little more of a scale look to it in my opinion. Now in Paul Norton's original guardsman that he painted, they had shoulder armor that was white and he put a red stripe on it. It looked really nice. Well these guys don't have shoulder armor, but they do have this disc molded into their shoulder. So I thought I would do something drawing on US Army history. Now I'll start by painting a vertical line right through it, just like that. Now I'll do another line over here like that. And another one like this. 
and I'll fill these in. And then I'll very carefully paint a line right around the edge. There. That's for all my buddies in 3rd Platoon, Echo 436, Fort Benning, December 1989, who went on to Fort Ord in the 7th ID. Well, I'm going to call them done. If I had to give them a grade, I guess it would be a C. Um, I don't... I, I don't hide the fact that I'm still growing in learning to paint figures. Um, but I persist at it. I keep trying it. And it is difficult. Um, I, I've mentioned before, and um, you know, you could say, well, that you're just, you're just making excuses, but this is one that is valid. I think, um, I have really poor eyesight. Uh, it's really difficult for me to see, um, uh, what I'm doing. And, um, uh, uh, so I, but I, I, I want to do it well. I really do. Uh, so, uh, I keep doing it and, um. But I have fun with it. I, I, I mean, even though these are not, these don't look like uh, now what I had hoped they would look like when I started. Uh, I'm pretty happy with them in here. And I think once the model is painted and they're, they're part of that, that they will look, um, that they'll look okay uh, in the model. So uh, that's, that's encouraging to me. And I did find that this this is uh, it just seems like a simple blue and white scheme, but the the darker color of the blue and trying to highlight and contrast that, and then the white color of the armor, um, that's that that proved a little 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 trickier than I thought it would be. So that's uh, that's interesting to uh, find out. But I, I, I'm I'm okay with it. I can live with it. Well, I know this video has been fairly short, and you may be thinking, well, what was the point of watching a, an old guy paint figures in a very mediocre way? Um, how will that be helpful? Well, maybe there's been something helpful in the video. Uh, and if not, I hope it's just encouraged you uh, to, uh, if there's something that, that you're challenged in, to keep persisting in it. Uh, you know, I think it's I think it's fine to to do things and say, okay, I'm just going to accept it as it is. But in my mind, I always think I want to accept it as it is for now. Um, I'm always going to try and do better. I'm always going to try and grow. And um, that's that's kind of the takeaway from this is this is just part of the growth process. This is part of putting in the time that it's going to take to be able to do this uh, better. So uh, that is an encouragement to me. Well, thank you so much for watching this video. I'm so very grateful, especially if you're um, watching here at the end and uh, uh, you've watched it all the way through. I, I see the analytics. Um, you're you're one of a rare person, one of the rare people that 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 uh, sticks around to the very end. So let's have a little fun. Uh, if you're still watching at this point, why not drop a comment down below? that says, hey, John, don't be so blue. Um, <laughs> and and uh, you'll know what, what we're referring to and what I'll know what we're referring to. And we can have a laugh and other people will look at it and go, what does that mean? So um, just be a little, little bit of silliness. But uh, if you've not already done so, please do click the subscribe button down over here and subscribe to the channel. And uh, you know the routine. Hit the little bell icon and all that stuff. Uh, if you would like to support the work that I do, uh, there is a super thanks now down below um, that you can use uh, that I would be most grateful uh, for. Or if you would like to do something more long term, there's also links down below to Patreon and you can support the work that I do there um, and uh, get some additional uh, content uh, on Patreon. And for those of you who are already Patreon supporters, thank you so much uh, for your for your support and your commitment to what I do. It's a blessing to me and it's a blessing to my family. And uh, we're very grateful for, for that. And as I always like to do, I'll leave you with one final thought. In this hobby, if you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. Happy day to you, friends. Bye-bye.